It's very well established the impact that growth hormone can have on building muscle and dropping body fat. So in today's video, what I want to do is share with you MK677 as an orally active way to boost growth hormone production and also IGF-1 production in the human body. So before we get into the video, let's understand, first of all, what even is MK677? Well, MK677 is also known as ibutamorin and orotrope, and it's an orally active selective agonist of the ghrelin receptor. So research has actually shown that MK677 increases the secretion of growth hormone and IGF-1, but does not affect cortisol levels. It is being researched as a possible treatment for growth hormone deficiency, muscle and bone wasting, appetite stimulation, and Alzheimer's disease. Now, MK677 is often grouped with, with the selective androgen receptor modulator SARMs because it doesn't fit neatly into any other category. Now, I just want to emphasize MK677 is not a SARM. If anyone is trying to convince you that it's a SARM, they're incorrect. MK677 is not a SARM. Now, SARMs, on the other hand, tend to actually impact natural androgen production and thus can lower testosterone levels. Now, this means that their administration must be carefully controlled and that the compound should be cycled on and off to avoid suppression of natural androgen production. MK677, on the other hand, does not require these precautions. So first of all, MK677 increases both growth hormone and IGF-1, and it's really important to differentiate between these two hormones. Growth hormone is a peptide hormone produced by the pituitary gland that stimulates growth, metabolism, and tissue repair, while IGF-1 is a protein primarily produced in the liver in response to GH, promoting cell growth, proliferation, and tissue regeneration. While GH is referred to as the fountain of youth, because it directly regulates metabolism, fat breakdown, and overall growth, a key role of growth hormone is also stimulating IGF-1, which promotes cell growth, division, and tissue regeneration, especially in muscles and bones. GH is often associated with anti-aging effects due to its ability to stimulate tissue repair, improve muscle mass, reduce body fat, and promote overall vitality. As we age, GH levels naturally decline, contributing to many age-related declines in muscle mass, bone density, and metabolism. However, IGF-1, which is stimulated by GH, has been shown to have a more complex relationship with aging. While IGF-1 plays an important role in growth and regeneration, like muscle and bone health, and is considered to be anabolic, elevated IGF-1 levels over time can lead to accelerated aging in some contexts. This is because IGF-1 promotes cell proliferation, an excessive cell division can lead to the accumulation of mutations, increased cancer risk, and overall tissue aging. High IGF-1 levels are also associated with shorter lifespans in animal studies, as the increased rate of cell turnover can accelerate age-related diseases. If you're someone that's been trialing different supplements and you're still lacking that energy, spark, drive, and overall vitality, then you may want to check out my brand new supplement that I've just released called Katwa Pure. Katwa Pure harnesses the power of a particular Amazonian herb known as Katwaba bark, which has been used for centuries to boost mood, enhance energy levels, and act as an aphrodisiac. So definitely check out Katwa Pure. You can learn more by visiting inbeforesups.com. So let's move on to MK677's impact on the body and specifically look at its mechanism of action. So as we alluded to before, MK677 binds to the ghrelin receptor, and it's a receptor found in the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus, which signals the body to increase growth hormone release. Now, ghrelin, often called the hunger hormone, naturally stimulates growth hormone secretion in response to hunger and fasting. So that is why a lot of people, when they say strategies to boost growth hormone, a lot of people will say you should do long periods of fasting. That is because it's interacting with this ghrelin receptor. Now, MK677 effectively mimics this action by binding to the same receptor, leading to the release of growth hormone even when there is no actual food intake. So this growth hormone release is pulsatile, mimicking the body's natural growth hormone production patterns, which is key to its efficacy in promoting tissue regeneration and also fat metabolism. 
Because MK677 actually stimulates the body's natural growth hormone release mechanisms, it has a more gradual and controlled effect compared to using exogenous growth hormone injections, which floods the system with high levels of GH all at once. While GH typically stimulates the liver to produce IGF-1, MK677's effects on IGF-1 are modulated and tend to be less pronounced than what you would see with exogenous GH administration and depend on the dosage used, which we'll go into in this video. Unlike synthetic GH, which directly triggers IGF-1 production by the liver, ghrelin and MK677's mimicry of it, primarily stimulates GH release from the pituitary gland with a relatively smaller impact on IGF-1 secretion. Ghrelin itself doesn't have as powerful an effect on liver IGF-1 production as exogenous GH, which is why the IGF-1 increase with MK677 is less pronounced. Ghrelin is more associated with metabolic processes and appetite regulation than with directly triggering systemic IGF-1 production. So how much does MK677 actually increase growth hormone and also IGF-1? Now this study comparing doses of 10 milligrams and 50 milligrams per day results in a similar increase in growth hormone. However, it differentially impacts IGF-1 levels. Now this study is in a sample of young men with growth hormone deficiency. So you can see here these diagrams sort of illustrating the changes in growth hormone responses over a 24 hour period and also looking at IGF-1 concentrations. The next study was looking at doses of 2, 10, and 25 milligrams in a sample of healthy adults. We see a dose response for both GH and IGF-1. Now, this study does show that dosages of 10 and 25 milligrams leads to an increase in growth hormone and IGF-1, which is different from the before study, which found that growth hormone increase plateaued between 10 and 50 milligram dosages. Interestingly, this study also found that dosing in the morning led to a higher GH and IGF-1 levels compared to dosing at nighttime. So that's uh, one key point to note. Bear in mind, of course, if you use MK677, it is going to make you ravenous, which means that you'll want to eat absolutely everything in your fridge, everything in your pantry. So just be careful if you're, you're noticing these side effects. Moving on to MK677's effects specifically on body composition. So this study investigated whether MK677 could reverse protein loss caused by calorie restriction. Eight healthy participants aged 24 to 39 underwent two 14-day periods of low-calorie intake, 18 kilocalories per kilogram of body weight per day. During the second week of each period, participants received either 25 milligrams of MK677 daily or a placebo with a washout period of 14 to 21 days in between. During the first week of calorie restriction, nitrogen loss was similar between the MK677 and placebo groups. However, in the second week, MK677 improved nitrogen balance significantly compared to the placebo. The nitrogen balance shifted to a slight gain, plus 0.31 grams per day, in the MK677 group, while the placebo group continued to experience loss, minus 1.48 grams per day. Over the seven treatment days, MK677 consistently improved nitrogen retention compared to placebo. Overall, MK677 was well tolerated with no serious side effects. The findings suggest that MK677 can reverse nitrogen loss caused by calorie restriction, indicating potential therapeutic use in patients with protein loss due to acute or chronic illnesses. Moving on, this next study explored the effects of MK677 on growth hormone secretion and body composition in otherwise healthy obese males. 24 participants aged 18 to 50 years with body mass indexes above 30 and waist to hip ratios exceeding 0.95 were randomly assigned to receive either 25 milligrams of MK677 or a placebo daily for eight weeks. Treatment with MK677 led to a 40% increase in serum IGF-1, along with significant increases in growth hormone. Cortisol levels remained unaffected after two and eight weeks of treatment. In terms of body composition, fat-free mass increased significantly in the MK677 group. As measured by dual energy X-ray absorptiometry and a four-compartment model, however, there were no significant changes in total or visceral fat. 
Basol metabolic rate increased at two weeks but returned to baseline by eight weeks. Glucose and insulin fasting levels stayed stable, but glucose tolerance was impaired at both two and eight weeks. And the third study investigated the effects of MK677 on 65 healthy participants aged between 60 to 81 years of age who were enrolled in a two-year double-blind placebo-controlled trial. Now, participants received either MK677 or a placebo daily, and outcomes were measured every six months. MK677 significantly increased growth hormone and IGF-1 levels to those observed in healthy young adults without serious adverse effects. Over 12 months, fat-free mass increased in the MK677 group compared to the placebo group, while body cell mass reflected by intracellular water also improved. There were no significant changes in total fat mass or abdominal visceral fat, but limb fat increased more in the MK677 group. The most frequent side effects were increased appetite, transient lower extremity swelling, and mild muscle pain. Although bone mineral density changes suggested increased bone remodeling, the increase in fat-free mass did not translate into measurable improvements in strength or function. And so we can see this study here was titled Effects of an Oral Ghrelin Mimetic on Body Composition and Clinical Outcomes in Healthy Older Adults. Now, what about whether or not MK677 can specifically affect bone turnover and bone mineral density? The oral growth hormone secretagogue MK677 increases bone turnover, the process of bone resorption and formation, but its benefits remain unclear. In elderly adults, MK677 significantly elevated markers of bone turnover and IGF-1 levels. Similar results were observed in obese young males, with short-term increases in bone markers and IGF binding proteins. However, in postmenopausal women with osteoporosis, MK677 was less favorable than alendronate, which effectively suppressed bone resorption. While MK677 consistently stimulates bone turnover, its long-term impact on bone health is uncertain and may not match established treatments. Now, does MK677 have any impact on sleep quality? Before we get into this study, I actually want to emphasize that when I've used MK677 in the past, specifically before bedtime, I've actually noticed an improvement in my deep sleep scores according to my Aura Ring. So if anyone's experimented with MK677, they may, may find that if they use it at nighttime before bed, they'll see an improvement in their sleep quality. So let's understand this study. This study explored the effects of prolonged treatment with MK677, a novel growth hormone secretagogue, on sleep quality in healthy young and older adults. The research followed a double-blind, placebo-controlled three-period crossover design for young subjects ages 18 to 30 and a two-period design for older subjects ages 65 to 71 with doses of MK677 at 5 and 25 milligrams for young subjects and 2 and 25 milligrams for older subjects. Results for young adults revealed that high dose MK677, 25 milligrams, significantly increased the duration of stage MV sleep by about 50% and REM sleep by more than 20% compared to placebo. Additionally, deviations from normal sleep patterns decreased from 42% under placebo to 8% under high dose MK677. In older adults, MK677 treatment led to a nearly 50% increase in REM sleep and a decrease in REM latency, along with a reduction in deviations from normal sleep. These findings suggest that MK677 may not only enhance sleep quality, but also address the diminished growth hormone activity associated with aging. Now, what about how growth hormone deficiency in children is impacted by MK677? Now, specifically, this is a disease state, so not medical advice. So just bear in mind that this is not medical advice. The study investigated how different growth hormone treatments affected height in children with growth hormone deficiency, focusing on how residual hypothalamic pituitary thyroid function influenced these effects. The results showed that recombinant growth hormone treatment resulted in the greatest increases in height, with a mean annual height velocity of 11.1 cm per year, significantly higher than the other treatments. Both doses of MK677, 0.4 mg per kilogram per day, and 0.8 mg per kilogram per day, also increased height compared to placebo, 
with the 0.8 milligram per kilogram per day dose showing a mean annual height velocity of 6.9 centimeter per year and the 0.4 milligram per kilogram per day dose showing 6.0 centimeter per year. These MK677 groups showed significantly greater height gains than placebo, 4.5 centimeter per year. However, recombinant growth hormone led to the highest growth, suggesting it is more effective for children with severe growth hormone deficiency. Now, moving on, what about how potentially it can play a role in anemia? Now, this study examined the effects of growth hormone on blood volume and red cell mass in adults with growth hormone deficiency. Now, 13 participants were enrolled in a three-month double-blind placebo-controlled trial receiving either growth hormone uh, treatment or a placebo. In the growth hormone-treated group, total body water and lean body mass significantly increased while fat mass significantly decreased. At baseline, participants' red cell mass was lower than predicted normal values, but growth hormone treatment led to significant increases in red cell mass, plasma volume, and total blood volume. No changes in body composition or blood volume were observed in the placebo group. Significant correlations were found between increases in total blood volume and both total body water and lean body mass, while reductions in fat mass were negatively correlated with total blood volume changes. The findings suggest that erythropoiesis is impaired in adults with growth hormone deficiency and that growth hormone treatment and potentially MK677 stimulates red blood cell production and increases blood volume. These changes may contribute to improved exercise performance in individuals with growth hormone deficiency. Moving on, what about its impact on Alzheimer's disease? Now, bear in mind, this is a disease state and this is not medical advice. The study aimed to test whether MK677, a growth hormone secretagogue that increases IGF-1, could slow Alzheimer's disease progression based on evidence that IGF-1 enhances better amyloid clearance in animal models. In this 12-month double-blind trial with 563 patients with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease, MK677 significantly increased serum IGF-1 levels by over 70%. However, it showed no significant improvements in cognitive or functional outcomes compared to placebo across multiple measures, including the Alzheimer's disease assessment scale and clinical dementia rating. These findings indicate that while MK677 successfully elevated IGF-1, it was ineffective in slowing Alzheimer's disease progression. All right, now let's move on to safety and side effects. Now, bear in mind, it's actually possible to mitigate and reduce these side effects if you know what you're doing. First of all, MK677 is generally considered to be well tolerated in the short term in clinical trials, but there is limited long term safety data and no toxicology data available. Now, some potential side effects and concerns that have been reported in clinical trials include number one, increased appetite. Look, if you're using MK677, it absolutely will make you hungry. It's known to increase appetite, which can lead to weight gain for some users. Number two, it can actually increase water retention. Um, this is not necessarily a, a bad side effect for some people who can't actually hold fluids in their body. Number three is the blood sugar increase. It is known that it can actually raise blood sugar and also potentially insulin resistance, but this could be offset using dihydroberberine, a brewer's yeast, a cinnamon, and some other GDAs. Um, so these are the main side effects that I've noted uh, and what I've seen reported mostly in uh, clinical trials. So common dosages, MK677 is not currently approved for human use. However, it has been used recreationally, particularly in the bodybuilding space. Now, while dosages of up to 50 milligrams per day have been used in clinical trials, taking the previous trials and anecdotal reports together, it seems like there may be a point of diminishing returns for MK677 in terms of growth hormone increases, that's around 25 milligrams per day. And while higher dosages lead to further increases in IGF-1, 25 milligrams is also the dosage used in most clinical trials. And some studies also indicate that chronic administration of MK677 generally leads to diminishing results over time. So that pretty much wraps up today's video on MK677. If you have used this particular compound before, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.